Bannister Tarleton was born on August 21, 1754, and was the son of Liverpool Mayor John Tarleton. Bannister Tarleton studied at Oxford University to become a lawyer, but after his father died in 1773, he inherited 5,000 British pounds and, within a year, squandered it all on gambling and women. But with his remaining money, he bought a commission as a cornet or lieutenant in the 1st Dragoon Guards. Now, the 1st Dragoon Guards at the time were some of the most elite British cavalry units in the world. When the American Revolutionary War broke out, he left the Dragoon Guards and joined the 16th Light Dragoons and sailed with Charles Cornwallis to America. On June 4, 1776, he reached South Carolina as a part of a mission to capture Charleston, South Carolina with General Sir Henry Clinton, who was the overall commander of British forces in America. After three weeks of disaster, Sir Henry Clinton decided to abandon his attack on Charleston, and he moved his forces to Staten Island in New York. Tarleton had seen no action in South Carolina. During the early New York campaign, he served as a scout, though, but he saw no action there as well. Later that summer, Lieutenant Colonel William Harcourt arrived with more dragoons, and Tarleton transferred to his command. American General Charles Lee had caught the eye of British commanders, and they used Lieutenant Colonel Harcourt and William Howe's armies to eliminate him. Now, General Charles Lee really stressed the use of cavalry in the early stages of the American Revolutionary War, something that General George Washington really didn't see uh, the importance of at the beginning. And General Charles Lee had won a few victories against the British, and so he had to be stopped. British scouts learned that Lee was resting at White's Tavern near Basking Ridge, and Harcourt gathered a small band of the 16th Light Dragoons, including Tarleton, to gain intelligence on Lee's army for an impending attack. On December 13th, American General Sullivan took command of Lee's army and marched them away from Basking Ridge, while Charles Lee decided to stay behind at the tavern with 10 bodyguards. Tarleton and a few other scouts learned of Lee's presence, and Tarleton informed Harcourt and then decided to attack the tavern himself. Lee was protected, as I said earlier, by 10 bodyguards, but they were caught by surprise when the British dragoons quickly rode down the hill from the woodline. The dragoons made quick work of the bodyguards, and after a brief shootout inside the tavern, Tarleton and his dragoons retreated back outside and threatened to burn down the tavern unless Charles Lee gave himself up. Within minutes, Charles Lee was a prisoner. Bannister Tarleton and Lieutenant Colonel William Harcourt led Lee back to British headquarters, and for his service, Tarleton was given the command of a small band of dragoons. His next task was to eliminate militia and capture continental supplies. And it's interesting because at Charleston, South Carolina, Tarleton pretty much hung out around headquarters. He really didn't do any scouting missions or anything like that, and he saw firsthand the failure that whole campaign was. And as a young officer, it taught him what not to do. Sir Henry Clinton had been very cautious in his attack, and one of the reasons he was so cautious was because at this point, it was still a rebellion. They didn't want to seem brutal in the eyes of the Patriots, and they still somewhat wanted to have a peaceful end to this little rebellion. And so by doing that, um, Sir Henry Clinton wasn't, he didn't really think with a military strategy in mind. And he tried to be kind of like crowd control. That's how he approached a campaign, and the American militia, the American forces inside Charleston, they decided that they weren't going to hold anything back. And so that's why the British sustained very heavy losses, and also Sir Henry Clinton and Charles Cornwallis, Wallace, they were not expecting the South Carolina heat and some of the diseases which ran rampant in the British camp. So when Tarleton reached New York, he expected right away to join one of the few armies that was going to attack George Washington, but he didn't. He served as a scout and was very angry that he had ne- that he had seen no action so far. And so that's one of the reasons he decided to just attack the tavern. And for his service, it was very surprising for the higher-ups. They were like, 
we didn't order this and part of them was they were angry that he had disobeyed orders and all that stuff but they were happy to finally have charles lee captured and so with tarleton's small forces he would set out in new jersey new york and pennsylvania to go fight american militias and one of the things he emphasized early on was having the fastest horses in america he knew that speed was key for dragoons and he also drilled his men hours and hours a day i read somewhere that he drilled his men upwards of nine to ten hours every single day because he wanted them to be able to handle themselves in battle at this point in the war Tarleton had not gotten his green uniform yet. That would not come until he became the Commandant of the British Legion in 1778. Currently on screen, you will see different types of British cavalry units. And the far left red uniform is what Tarleton would have worn. That was the uniform of not just the 1st Dragoon Guards, but also the 16th Light Dragoons. Red was the standard color of the British Army, and it wouldn't be until John Graves Simcoe would take command of the Queen's Rangers in America and would take the green uniform in order to blend in with the environment. So it's kind of like early camouflage. And John Graves Simcoe was an early mentor to Tarleton. He saw a lot of potential in Tarleton. And believe it or not, after John Graves Simcoe was captured the very first time, Tarleton ended up taking command of the Queen's Rangers for a very short time. Tarleton often credited General Simcoe with teaching him almost everything he knew in terms of tactics, and not just for cavalry, but for infantry and skirmishers as well. Another one of Tarleton's friends early in the war was Major John Andre. Now, one of the first winners of the war, Tarleton, was wintered in Philadelphia, and Major John Andre was in Philadelphia at the same time, and the British were very bored. Tarleton often wrote to his family that this is not what he expected military life to be like. We do nothing but just sit around all day and occasionally have formations and inspections, but other than that, we just sit around all day. And so Tarleton and Major John Andre decided to start a theater troupe in order to entertain the soldiers and Major John Andre would compose the music, and he would create the sets. So that's a little fact that I didn't know until recently about Major John Andre. And Tarleton was very fascinated with theater and the arts, and he was one of the frequent actors in these plays. And they even got so well known that even American citizens, patriots, would come to see their performances. One of the things also Tarleton talked about was how the British military worked. He saw early on that in order to get position or anything like that, you had to be in favor and kind of kiss butt of the higher ups. Not just the generals, but the king and all that stuff. And that was something that Tarleton spoke out against in public and all of that stuff. So he was not a very liked person by his commanding officers, but all of them respected his ability. And that's why early on in the war, they gave him a detachment of the 16th Light Dragoons, but he didn't really have any large-scale major missions. They just sent him to go around and capture supplies and uh, disorganize local militias and attack them if necessary. But it wouldn't be until around the Saratoga campaign that he would see some major action. Now I'm going to stop today's episode of Bannister Tarleton in America. Next week will be episode two. I want to thank everyone who tuned in to watch this video. This is something a little more historically minded. Uh, this is one of my favorite characters in history to read about and all that stuff. So if you enjoy this short little series or the short little video, I should say, leave a like and a comment and have a good day, everyone.